Hello everybody. I know long time no see. It's been a very busy spring and summer with graduations and uh, birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just everything. It's just been busy, busy time having a good time with my family. Um, I'm here to do a video about my piercings. I had posted some pictures on my Facebook page of my piercings and um, asked if anyone would like to see a video and a few of you said yes. So this first video is going to be about the piercings I have and their pain readings. Um, next ones I'll do some videos on how to sleep with them and aftercare. Okay so we all know about first lobes. Okay so for those of you who don't know my first lobes are not gauged. This one is gauged a bit. This, this, these are faux gauges, but this could actually fit through this ear because my daughter split my ear when she was a baby. Um, first ones were done with at home ice needle, old fashioned. It was the seventies. Use a sewing needle, ice, then you take the uh, straw from a broom, burn it at both ends, soak it in alcohol, and stick them in your ears. First ones. Okay, second holes. We're done with the gun. Um, at like a piercing pagoda or something and um, I had a harder time with the with the second holes. Um, they're uneven. This one is lower than this one. Um, the gun was not, a, it was easy on pain con compared to, you know, ice and a sewing needle. So, yeah. Then the third one I had, I had this done. Actually, I had it done over here first at Claire's, which was the worst thing I could have done. Um, I had no clue though it was the 80s so you really didn't know about tattoo parlors and piercings and needles this one got uh infected from the solutions they had me using and um, i had to take it out and let that close this one i got done second um this one still this one is old as dirt and it still flares it still hurts it still swells from time to time um it was also done with the gun and it kind of cracked my cartilage what happens with crack with your cartilage and a gun, I do not recommend piercings anywhere on your ear. I don't recommend them anywhere, but the lobes are the best for a gun. But when you get up in the cartilage, it can crack it. And what that does is underneath your skin, if you've ever seen a broken windshield, it'll stay intact, but there's all these little broken pieces of glass. That's what it's like when you crack your cartilage. And that's why it will always, always hurt and bother you. You really can't repair that. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so next one I got done was my tragus. That is this piercing right here. As you see, all of these balls are still my original piercing balls. This one I'm about to change out soon. Um, I've had it for about it's going on three months now for this piercing. Um, I have had people tell me it was their most painful piercing. Didn't bother me at all. Um, he clamped it. He put the needle through um, and he put the earring in and it just felt like a lot of pressure. It didn't feel like I would feel like any real pain from it. Um, so for this one, on a scale of one to ten, I would give this one maybe a one to two. I really didn't feel anything and even the rest of the day I didn't feel anything. I forgot it was there and I bumped it, you know, doing this and stuff like that. I forgot all about it, um, but I would, I would, every time I bumped it or touched it, I'd go clean it. And we'll talk about cleaning in another video. Um, then my piercer, he does two for Tuesdays. So on Tuesday, you get two piercings for the price of one. So I went and got these two done. This is the start of a triple forward helix. This is the forward helix. This area of the ear is the helix. This is the forward helix and there'll be two more, one below and one below that coming down. Um, and you can wear earrings in succession of sizes and all of that, but I'll be getting those two done next. Those are next on my list of piercings. Um, this one, my helixes hurt a little more. Um, at least on this ear. I don't have any on this ear to attest to it, but they hurt a little more on this ear. So when they put the, when you put the needle through them, it stung. It wasn't like this hard pain. It just stung. So I'll give that a three to maybe a four. Um, this one saying three to four. Um, this, this one swelled. This one didn't. 
but this one healed faster than this one. Neither of them are fully healed. For cartilage piercings, it takes uh, nine months to a year. It could take up to a year to fully heal them. Um, you can change the jewelry out before then, but we'll talk about jewelry changing and cleaning and things of that nature in uh, the aftercare video. Um, but they were, this one still stings when I move it. I can totally move it back and forth, but it just stings just slightly, just a little bit. Um, and so that's it for that ear. Over here, I got this big one here is my conch. It's my conch piercing that is through the big piece of cartilage. Hopefully you can see the back of that. Um, conch piercings. Um, I always do a lot of research on my piercings before I get them. I watch videos and stuff like that because I want to see um, not them getting it pierced so much as I want to know about what it's like in healing because piercing, okay, piercing hurts. It's going to hurt a little bit. Um, you'll feel pressure, which is you'll, you're going to be uncomfortable with the piercing. I mean, they're putting a needle through you. However, it's after like three days later that pain starts hitting you. So I wanted to know about it. A lot of people said that was their most painful piercing. And for me, once again, uh, when he did it, a lot of people say they hear a pop too with these cartil inner cartilage piercings, the, the tragus and the conch. They say they hear a pop because the cartilage is thick. I didn't hear a pop with any of my piercings. And um, healing for me has been phenomenal. Um, I have absolutely no trouble with it. It didn't even swell. I was looking for swelling. I was looking for, and just like the tragus, I could forget it was there. Um, not a problem at all. And that one is about two weeks old, week and a half to two weeks old. And then just a couple of days ago, I got the Doth or Daith. Um, it's spelled D-A-I-T-H, but my understanding from looking it up is that it is actually pronounced doth, but many people will say day, same with the conch. It is pronounced conch. It's like the conch shell, but a lot of people say conch. So um, the either way, you're saying, however you want to say it, say it. It's completely up to you. But um, the, um, the doth was... Um, it was the weirdest piercing. Let me see if I'm not sure how well you can see where that sits in the ear in the ear, but I hope you can see how that sits. That is a on me, because everybody's ear anatomy is different. On me, that's a pretty long piece of cartilage. And it was just weird how long it took the needle to go through. That was really a, a weird experience. I didn't hear a pop with that either, but it just seemed to go on longer than my other piercings. I feel the initial sting when the needle goes in and that stung too. Um, and then after that, I usually don't feel anything, but you feel that longer because it takes a longer time and then threading the jewelry. This is the only piercing um, I've ever um, had done with a hoop. And um, the reason being that I allowed it to be done with the hoop was that that's what for one, it's what I intend to wear in it. The piercing is on a curve. He did it with a curved needle. So it's in the shape of a hoop. It's not a straight needle. And then he's trying to force a curved object through a straight piercing. So, um, and the hoop will not move. Since, it's, since it sits in the ear and it lays there, I can tell by the bead, which is a tiger eye bead, that, that it has not moved. It stayed in the same place from where I first got it. Um, and the, what can happen is with the hoop, as the hoop moves, since they move and they turn and everything, you can end up with hypertrophic scarring, which is little bumps or keloids. Um, keloids are a growth of skin. They do not go away. Okay, hypertrophic scarring though, you can use tea tree oil and get that to go away, but we'll talk about that more in aftercare. This ear is kind of bare, so that's why I went to this one also to give this one a bit of a break. Um, and so next is, you know, get my forward helixes. Um, I have a design in mind for this ear as well. Um, I have a, more of a design in mind for this ear besides those two. My ears are going to be pierced to the nines. I love it. I love the piercings. I've always wanted them, but after my experiences with the gun, I was afraid to get any more because I thought maybe I just was not good or prone to piercings, but having them done with the needle gives me no problems whatsoever. 
So that's all my piercings. I hope you guys got good views of everything and that you could see. Um, if you have any questions or anything in particular that you want me to address in my upcoming videos, please put them down in the comment section and I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.